Hey guys, what's going on? Insidious Swede back again here for another YouTube video and today I am bringing you my favorite manga of 2017 video. I actually did one of these for 2016 as well. Uh, which, first off, I'll have not only that video linked down below, but I'll have a link for every single manga series that I'll be talking about today, with the exception of a couple. Uh, so, I'm not going to spend too long talking about every manga here, again, just because I already have uh, dedicated videos for 8 out of the 11 manga that I'll be talking about today, so keep that in mind. Um, but if you don't know the exact purpose of this video, uh, this is just me kind of going over the year in terms of new manga releases. So these are my favorite manga that officially released in 2017, not favorite volumes that came out in 2017, but new manga that started during this year. Uh, I plan to do one next year as well, so I guess kind of like an annual video series. And again, if you want to know more about any one of these manga that I'll be talking about, I'll have a link for all of them down below in the description. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, in 2017, I picked up 11 new series. I have read eight of them, and those eight are ranked from my least favorite to my most favorite. Uh, but before we get into those, I want to first go over the three I have yet to get to. The first one is Dragon Ball Super. Uh, I just talked about this manga in my last manga haul video. Um, I'm putting it off for now. I've seen a lot of the anime. I'm in really no immediate rush to get into it, but it is a new manga from 2017, so I figured I'd mention it here. The next manga I have is called Kake Gurui. Compulsive Gambler, uh, which first of all, beautiful volumes. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say very positive things about it, so I'm looking forward to it. Again, it's just another one of those manga that I haven't quite got to yet, but uh, yeah, picked it up, and it's a brand new manga of 2017, so again, mentioning it here. And the final book that I have yet to get to is Volume 1 of Tokyo Ghoul Re. Again, this isn't technically a new series when you consider it's more of a continuation of a manga that's been going on for a long time, but again, uh, another manga I haven't started yet. Um, I, I have finished Tokyo Ghoul, which by the way, amazing manga, I think we can all agree on that. But I'm just not really dying to get into Tokyo Ghoul Re yet, just because I have so many other manga I need to read. So this one, again, is one that I'm just going to be putting back uh, for a little while, not too much longer. But again, uh, I will not be getting to it before the end of 2017. So now let's get into the eight manga that I have read and that I have ranked, again, from uh, least favorite to most favorite. So... At number eight, I have Topu GP, uh, done by Kosuke Fujishima, who also did Oh My Goddess, uh, which is another manga that got a pretty nice re-release by Dark Horse in an omnibus format. So if you want to check out Oh My Goddess in an updated uh, volume, you can do that as well. But uh, this is Kosuke's uh, next manga. It's a motorcycle or moto GP racing manga. Uh, it is a, a pretty decent series, but considering I'm showing it to you first, it was my least favorite new release that I read from this year. Uh, the main character is pretty standard. He's kind of a goofy kid, um, but he's a very good racer, a lot of potential in the sport. And uh, so far, it's been pretty interesting. Uh, again, I've only read the first volume so far, so it's hard to judge the manga based off of this one volume. Hopefully the characters develop and we get more from it, but as of right now, it's definitely a manga that I'm just kind of lukewarm on because it was okay, but nothing too special. At number seven, I have Smokin' Parade. This is done by Jinsei Kataoka and Kazuma Kondo. Uh, Jinsei Kataoka is personally one of my favorite mangaka. Uh, she has such incredible talent in her ability to draw manga. Now, I'm pretty sure she also works on the story as well with this series. Uh, this one is probably the most um, out there kind of manga. If you're a fan of fantasy, pretty dark fantasy manga, um, and as well as her other work, uh, Dead Man Wonderland. If you're a fan of that, you're definitely going to get 
you know, those kinds of vibes uh, from this manga as well. But again, if you want to hear me go into further detail, definitely check out my first impressions on uh, Smoke and Parade. But overall, I think this manga might have the most potential out of all of the manga I'll be talking about today. Uh, the one thing I do want to note is it does have very uh, slow release schedules. Um, as well because this manga is a monthly release and uh, from what I've seen sometimes it takes even more than a single month to put out one chapter so it's definitely slow releasing but the content and the quality is all there so I'm definitely excited to read more of Smoke and Parade. At number six we have Re Monster. Uh, this is a fairly new read for me it didn't uh, come out too long uh, ago anyways, but it's a very kind of mo uh, standard manga we've seen before. It does some interesting things. Uh, this guy essentially gets reborn as a goblin, and while he was human, apparently humanity also has garnered uh, skills of some sort that he's kind of carried over uh, to his new life as a goblin, and essentially he can gain these new traits by eating uh, certain creatures. And there's a whole like evolutionary tree to goblins. It's a very interesting concept, uh, which is why I have it above a manga like Smoke and Parade. Uh, I, I like it a lot. It's very entertaining. Uh, and overall, it's a manga that I'm excited to see more from. So, Remonster, a uh, good manga, not great, but definitely has the potential to be great. Uh, I'm assuming if I get further into it, that'll be an easier judge of character. But again, with uh, newer manga like this, it's always hard to tell where exactly it's going to go. Uh, but yeah, Remonster, good manga. After that, at number five, I have Delicious in Dungeon, uh, the newest manga that I've read. I just made a first impressions on this like two or three days ago, so it's very fresh in my mind. Uh, this is a cooking manga. It's also a, a, a dungeon explorer action adventure kind of series. Uh, we follow this character here who has a lot of conflicted um, you know, feelings and ideals for what he wants to do with his life. For one, he wants to save his sister who was eaten by a dragon right here at the very beginning of the manga, but he also wants to become some sort of culinary uh, mastermind inside uh, the dungeon, and he wants to figure out what he can eat, what he can eat, what's good to cook, uh, stuff like that. So it's a very interesting manga. As I mentioned in my first impressions video, there's a lot of good comedy in here as well, so it's funny. A lot of good action, and overall, it's, it's a solid manga. So, looking forward to more, and uh, definitely a series I'd recommend. So, that's number five. At number four, I have the oldest manga on this list. This came out all the way back in early January, and that is The Girl from the Other Side. This is one of the most unique manga I have ever read. It essentially is based around this duo here, this little girl who has a very interesting story that I'm not going to spoil, of course, for you guys, and also this uh, guardian deity, essentially, that's protecting her from a lot of things that's going on in his world. Um, essentially, there's two separate dimensions. There's the outside and the inside, and there's a lot of weird stuff going on here, a lot of abstract ideas. Also, the artwork in here, in my opinion, is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, sometimes the backgrounds can leave a little bit to be desired, but overall, it's a beautifully drawn series. Again, the characters are very fascinating, the whole concept behind it. And uh, from where this first volume led us, I am really excited to read more of it. I've actually started volume two, but never got around to finishing it. And uh, from what I read of that, it was really going somewhere as well. So uh, truly a fantastic series with a lot of great ideas and uh, one that I'm looking forward to getting back into very soon. But it does seem, again, this is another one of those manga that take a very long time to release volumes for, whether that's because it's uh, very much keeping up to date with a Japanese release or because it's very slow in terms of the chapter releases, I'm not too sure. But again, it's a manga that uh, it's definitely going to be a while before we get the entire thing over here and for it to finish, but I'm still excited to uh, follow along as we get further on into this series. So at number four, I have the girl from the other side. At number three, we have 
to your eternity. And if I'm going to be honest, uh, the top three here could have all been in different orders. This could have been one, same way as number one could have been three. It's really a tie, but I figured I'd go with this order. So anyways, getting into it. Uh, to Your Eternity is done by Yoshitoki Oima, the same mangaka behind A Silent Voice. Who, uh, if you guys did not know, A Silent Voice is easily one of my favorite manga series of all time. It's an absolutely brilliant series. Very tragic, just like To Your Eternity. Although this one takes a different approach at that tragic aspect of it. Kind of follows a, a creature that uh, we don't really know what it is, but itself also doesn't really know what it is. It kind of morphs and transforms over generations, turning from rock and moss into living creatures like a wolf. It goes on uh, different journeys, learning and experiencing along the way. Um, this is another manga that I'm very excited to see where it goes. There's a lot of tragedy, a lot of heartbreak. Um, just a great storytelling all around and personally uh, one of the best new manga series out there for sure So looking forward to reading more uh, for sure and again uh, as this one's number three It could have just as easily been number one in terms of my favorite manga that came out in 2017 So great series if you haven't heard of it definitely check it out at number two, I have The Promised Neverland. Now, I'm a huge fan of this manga. If you've heard me talk about it before, you know that. I'd like to praise this manga for its originality in terms of uh, being different than from what we see from most of Viz Media's stuff. Viz Media has always had a tendency to kind of rehash similar ideas. Uh, the Promised Neverland, for the most part, likes to break that mold. I'm not going to say it's the most original thing I've ever read in my entire life, because that's that wouldn't be true. But overall, it's a very good manga about this messed up orphanage and about these three kids essentially trying to save not only themselves, but also all the other kids within it along with a lot of sinister things uh, going on behind the scenes that uh, we kind of learn piece by piece as we go along there's a lot of uh, again also another manga filled with tragedy but also betrayal and uh, just a lot of good action as well for a, a manga of this nature so uh, personally I think it's the best new manga from Viz Media or excuse me uh, uh, Shonen Jump magazine uh, truly a great series. I have heard recently, I'm not caught up to date with it recently, there has been a dip in quality, which if that's true, that sucks, because uh, from what I've read, it's been fantastic. I think I've read around 30, 35 chapters altogether. Uh, but overall, it's a great series. Uh, cannot wait to get more of it in physical format. And uh, as of 2017, my second favorite new manga to come out this year. And at number one, my favorite manga to come out in 2017 is Golden Kamui. This series just blew me away from essentially chapter one. It's a series that does so many amazing things. It takes this uh, soldier who's out of the war and essentially sends him on this treasure hunt to find uh, this missing gold with a, a young girl who kind of knows a lot more than he, he does. but. Uh, it's a series that really is hard to explain in a simple video like this, especially when I haven't really prepared anything to talk about. Uh, just think of it as a really different, unique kind of action-adventure series that follows these two characters on a, a very brutal journey to find something that they thought didn't even exist in the first place. Uh, as you can see, the artwork is absolutely incredible. And uh, it's truly, again, the best new manga I've read this year. But again, there was a lot of great manga for 2017. I mean, if we really think about it, this year has been fantastic for manga. So many great series coming out, so many new manga getting solicited. It's truly been a, a fantastic year to be a manga collector. I remember back when I first got into manga, how uh, sparse and, and few in between a brand new manga was to come out in English. It seems like the industry is uh, doing better than it ever has before, which really makes me happy. I can't wait to see what new manga come out in the future. And uh, this year shows us that again, it's a very bright future indeed. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Again, kind of just a quick video going over all of the manga that I thought was fantastic that I bought this year that, that came out. There's of course manga that I didn't get that came out that maybe you would expect to be on this list, but uh, these are the manga that I bought. Again, I didn't get everything, which uh, sometimes can be hard to believe, but 
Uh, there's a lot of series out there that I'm still needing to get. So if you've heard, a heard of a manga that came out this year that I didn't get, I'd love to know about it. That you think is fantastic, that you think is underrated, that deserves more appreciation. Definitely let me know about those ones as well. But uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. But until next time, my name is Insidious Swede. Take care.